500 days since Anna Ibrahim became Malaysia's Prime Minister. He announced two big plans in Malaysia, NIMP 2030 and NETR. This is PM Anna's master plan to reform Malaysia. Today, we are going to talk about the details of NETR. Hey guys, it's Heshwai, your investing friend. First thing first, three big numbers. These are three renewable energy targets set by NETR. With these targets, Malaysia can achieve net zero by 2050. This means that by 2050, 70% of Malaysia energy will be supplied by renewable energy. And with this, Malaysia can achieve net zero. Net zero doesn't mean that we don't produce carbon anymore. It means that the carbon that we produce equals to the carbon that we remove. Like for example, in 2019, Malaysia generated 330 gigagram of carbon. If we can remove this 330 gigagram of carbon, then we can achieve net zero already. Whoa! So the plan is to change Malaysia energy sources from this to this. I know you might think, Walao, people bully already. Government still want to do this bo eng bo jia thing. Use what renewable energy got what use to me? Now let me tell you a story. Do you know why salary in Malaysia is so low? Even if we got degree also, our salary is so low ah. That is because most of the businesses in Malaysia they are not very efficient and not very high tech. So they are not very profitable and they always face problem growing after a few years. If business cannot grow, then how Taukia is going to pay us high salary? That's why we need to attract FDI to come into Malaysia to bring in higher skill and higher technology jobs. And when we Malaysians work there and learn, then after a few years, we leave the Angmo company with better skills, knowledge, technology, and open our own businesses to compete at the global stage. That's Malaysia's first plan to up our business value chain. And the first step comes from bringing in FDI. So, NETR is super important because all these and more companies, when they think whether to invest in Malaysia or not, the first thing that they ask is not your toilet clean or not, is your energy clean or not. They need to make sure that the energy that power their factory cannot come from coal or petrol. Abo, they don't want to invest in Malaysia. So NETR is an assurance that our government gives to all these Angmo companies telling them don't worry, our energy supply is clean. So just come, mari, lai. Another reason why NETR is super important is because Malaysia is a country that do export and EU and US already said clearly that if the things that they import are not made with clean energy, they will charge tariff kaukau on the imported products. And coal, which is not a clean energy, is currently supplying over 50% of our energy. If we don't change this, and the tariffs make our export more expensive than other countries, then our export will drop. And then, Malaysia will be really GG that time. We already have many examples like this. When US ban top glove la, and when Dyson ban ATM la, because of forced labor la, or when EU ban our palm oil because they say we cut down forests to plant palm oil la. If we don't talk about sustainability, they don't even want to buy from us. So NETR is important for two reasons. Number one, we need to attract FDI. So NETR is our promise to these Angmo companies. Number two, we need to continue to trade with Angmo companies. So NETR is our commitments that our products and services meet their standards. Okay, now we all know Malaysia government planning number one, Gong Jijengao like me, but execution? Hmm. So what can we do to make sure that we achieve NETR goal? Number one, reduce coal. Number two, increase solar. Number three, allow third party access to our grid and export of renewable energy. In 2020, nearly 66% of electricity generated in Peninsula Malaysia by TMB was still from coal. It will take some time for our coal plants to retire because our coal plants are built already and the contracts are signed already. If you suddenly want to terminate, then government have to pay a lot of penalty. And we also don't want suddenly no electricity ma. So government is talking to all these coal plants owners to see if there's any win-win solution to retire these coal plants slightly earlier. On top of that, another priority is to stop building new coal plants. With that, we can make sure that the percentage of energy coming from coal plant will slowly reduce towards 2050. 
Once we keep our air and energy in control, the next thing is to all in on renewable energy. And you know, Malaysia, very hot man, very suitable to use solar energy. Some more solar panel prices have dropped significantly in recent years. Last year, it has hit new all-time low. So installing solar is not that expensive anymore. On 1st of April 2024, Energy Commission Malaysia also announced that our 5th LSS5 bidding has now started. This time, there's a total of 2,000 megawatt of solar energy capacity up for bidding, much much bigger than the previous LSS1 to LSS4. This shows our government commitment to achieve NETR goals. However, in some of previous LSS projects, to win the bid, most of the solar players beat down prices like crazy to secure the project. But in the end, the margin was too low and some of them even failed to complete the construction of the project. So government also introduced CGPP with 800 megawatt quota. Under CGPP, solar energy producers can also sell their renewable energy to corporate players. This way, solar energy producers can make higher profits because they can nego directly with corporate instead of bidding government projects. All this while, TMB is the only one with control over electric grid in Malaysia. But to be honest, they are doing very good job lah. You can see in Malaysia, we almost never have any power outage. And they also commit to invest over 90 billion ringgit to upgrade our grid. Now, TMB need to open up to third party so other people can also assess our power grid. This way, when we install solar panel at home, we can sell our extra electric city to the grid. This will open up a whole new world for Malaysia power industry because renewable energy players can now sell their extra energy to other businesses and also another country. For example, Singapore land very expensive ma. So it is best to have a solar farm built in Johor that has a cheaper land than export renewable energy to Singapore. Win-win! Once this third party access is allowed, we can buy and sell energy through the energy exchange but the exact details of how it works is not yet announced la. If this vision can really translate into reality, then Malaysia will really be a renewable energy taiko in ASEAN. In short, the plan now is to reduce coal, increase solar, allow third-party access to our power grid, set up energy exchange, and export renewable energy. This is the whole plan. It is also the KPI that we as a Malaysian need to monitor whether the government is making progress in executing their plans. Two roadblocks for NTR to be successful. Number one, subsidy in petrol and gas. Currently, the petrol and gas subsidy in Malaysia is too high. In fact, we are one of the highest in the world. Shock, right? But if petrol is cheap, there's no reason for us to use renewable energy. Not only petrol, government is also subsidizing natural gas in gas power plant. This makes us very hard to adopt renewable energy. Petrol subsidy will slowly be replaced by a targeted approach from 2024 onwards. But on commercial level, natural gas will still be subsidized. As long as this subsidy is still there, it won't be easy for us to move away from these air but cheap energy sources. Number two, the success of NTR also relies heavily on phasing out of coal power plant. Government is still negotiating with these coal power plant's owners to retire the coal power plants early, but this won't be easy. Because these coal power plant owners, they also invested a lot of money to build them. They need to earn back their money ma. Early termination means that there needs to be compensation. If the compensation comes in the form of taxpayers' money or preferential treatment for awarding renewable energy assets as replacement, it will cause people distrust in the government. Correct communication strategy needs to the public. Now let's look at NETR in an investor's perspective. What companies will potentially benefit from NETR? We can group these companies into two categories, direct beneficiary and indirect beneficiary. Direct one is very straightforward. Renewable energy companies will definitely benefit from NETR. Companies that are directly involved in the development of renewable energy, the so-called EPCC players like one of the biggest one is SolarVest, with LSS5 of 2000MW and CGPP of 800MW alone, 
these are enough to keep them busy for a while. So the important thing is to find out winners from these RE players who has the track record of keeping costs under control and completing project on time. Then we look at the whole value chain. The journey for electric is very simple. First you have power plant, then substations, then only our house. So in between, there are cables that bring electricity to us. Can be also said that they will be committing 90 billion ringgit over the 5 years to upgrade the power grid in Malaysia. And 35 billion ringgit is related to energy transition upgrade. So you know where to look at lah, huh? The next big thing that people didn't really pay attention to is me, no lah, battery storage. There's one big problem in using renewable energy. Your electricity depends on the weather. No sun means no electric. That's why all countries cannot run 100% on renewable energy. We still need some gas or coal power plant to back up. Less unless battery storage technology improves significantly. Battery storage technology now is still very new and expensive. So it is very important to monitor companies that are going into battery development. That is on infrastructure side. There will also be consumer companies that benefit from NETR. For example, local car brands like Perodua and Proton. They will be releasing affordable EV in 2025. Our government currently banned foreign EV companies from selling their EV below 100k in Malaysia. That's why you see all the EV cars like BYD, Tesla, KN, they all sell above 100k one. This is to protect and to give time to our local players to catch up and also let these cash-rich EV foreign brands to kickstart the demand for EV charging stations. So in 2025, one year before the ban expired, the EV infrastructure will be there already. And then Peroda and Proton will launch their affordable EV. Take all the below 100k EV market share first. Then only government will allow foreign brands to import EVs below 100k into Malaysia in 2026. By that time, the demand for EV charging stations will kaboom. Companies that provide EV charging service will also kaboom. And ETR is a great master plan by our government. They just need to execute it properly. I believe this can restructure our whole economy and link Malaysia as part of global value chain. This is also a cue for our next generation. What industry you should choose if you want to ride on a wave that started by NETR or NIMP? Recently, everyone is talking about AI. And Nvidia's GPU has been selling like hotcakes so lucky because every companies in the world are rushing to buy GPU to build their own data centers. If you play game and use Nvidia GPU before, you will notice that you need separate power source to power the GPU. It shows how power hungry GPU is. So NETR is the right policy that came on the right time. Because we believe now everyone is crazy about GPU, people will be crazy about renewable energy again soon. Because soon they realize these AI data centers with ton of GPU are taking up too much power. What do you think about NETR? Let me know in the comment section. Until then, stay safe and stay strong investing. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.